This is Carl at National RV Detroit. I'm going to walk you through this 2019 Palomino Palomini 180FB. Okay, I'm on the door side of the trailer here walking towards the rear. And the first thing to note is your LP dis disconnect. So you got a quick connect LP fitting right here. If you can see it right there. And it's got a valve on it, so you, you just push it in, clip it on, and then turn the valve on. You get a, a hose with it to connect your grill. Your grill will hang right on this rack right here. Okay. And you just pull the pins and you can swing it out to what position you, you choose. Um, but you have to plug it in, or I should say connect it with the LP hose we provide with it, or the manufacturer provides, I guess you would say. So keep that in mind. Uh, you have a power awning with an LED light strip, outside speakers. Your uh, stairs fold right up into the trailer. You just remember on this particular one, after you fold it up in, you have to pull the pins here and extend your legs. Here, let me just show you so you understand what I'm saying. I think it's showing is much easier. You, first of all, you have to put these vertical. Then you're going to pull this pin right here like that and you'll raise the legs up a little higher so that they fit in pro the door or the stairs fit in properly okay and then it has a latch right here of course to release it okay um, let's see what else we have here this is just some uh, this is your dump hose here this is the LP hose I told you about it's got a male quick connect on this end and a female on this end. This is a crank for your your stabilizer jacks which take a three-quarter inch crank or a three-quarter inch socket on a drill and this is is to reduce your 30 amp power cord down to a regular 15 to plug it in at home. Okay. They got a deep cycle marine battery and an LP tank. The battery is a, a new interstate battery and the propane tank is full. Um, here's your water station here. So the most common way to get water to this trailer is through the city water connection. So you would just hook up the hose at the campsite, turn on the valve, and you're all set, all ready to go. Um, now if you go to a campground that does not have plumbing on the campsites, you can pre-fill this tank right here. This is your onboard fresh water tank. So you can pre-fill that and then use the the 12 volt pump that's in the trailer uh, to pump your water. So even if you don't have city water, you can still use everything in here just like it has city water, just by pumping your own. You just have to think ahead a bit and fill the water tank. All right, your this is the outside of your water heater. The switch to control it is inside. I just want to show you that it runs on gas and that this right here, where my finger is, that is the the drain for it. It has an anode rod on the back so it's about 8 or 10 inches long actually but um, it's also the drain plug and um, you need an inch and a sixteenth socket. An inch and a sixteenth six point socket is the best way to go and uh, so you should have one of those so you can drain it when you need to. A lot of people if you're not going to camp right away after you've been camping you want to drain the water out of the hot water tank just so it doesn't get brackish and start to smell and get foul. So. Okay, all right. Fresh water drain is just the drain for your fresh water tank. Uh, if, you're not, if you didn't use all the water. This is just an outside shower, hot and cold water to hose things down. That is the vent for your furnace. This is the service panel for your refrigerator. Keep in mind that this hose should always be hanging outside like that. That's to drain condensation out of the trailer. The refrigerator creates condensation in the cooling process, so that's where it drains out. Also, you have your 30 foot, 30 amp power cord, and I showed you the reducer that comes with it. That's up in the front compartment to reduce it down so you can plug it in at home. Keep in mind, the air conditioner draws more than 15 amps. It draws like 28 amps when the compressor kicks on, so if you're plug, just plugged into a regular household plug at home, you probably will blow a circuit breaker. But Generally, outdoor plugs are 20 amp, and as long as you plug this cord right into it with no extension cord, you should be able to get away with plugging it in at home and running the air conditioner. 
Uh, otherwise, uh, you, you would have to um, upgrade your circuitry at your house. But um, everything else runs perfectly normal without the, uh, except for the air conditioner on 15 amps, okay? Uh, this is just cable or satellite through to the entertainment area. And this is your black tank uh, uh, valve. So here's your black valve here. Here's your gray valve there. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to dump your black first. The black valve is for the black tank, which is toilet, water, and waste. So first you're going to dump that one. You have your hose on here, obviously, and it's going to the dump station. Then, after you dump that, you're going to dump the, the gray water tank, which is sink and shower water. So you dump that, and uh, that's cleaner water than the black water, so it kind of cleans out the hose a bit and, you know, it's, it's uh, not as nasty as the black water anyway, so, okay, so you do it that way. Um, try to always dump the black first. All right, let me see here. Just get this on so it doesn't drag. Okay. All right. Your hose for your dump uh, hose stores in here. You just pull the this end piece off and slide it right in there. This is neat because it comes with a, with a ladder. That's a good thing because all trailers have to be inspected at least three times a season. So you figure once in the spring, once in the fall, once in the middle of the summer, you're going to go up there or send somebody up there to look at all the sealant on the roof. Any place you see sealant from the manufacturer, you check it, including on the sides, the corners, for example. There's some sealant right here. That's clear ProFlex. Never use, um, never use uh, caulk from the hardware store. It's got to be the correct stuff from an RV place. That's, it's, that's important. It may seem like it's the same stuff, but generally speaking, it's not. So. But the roof is the most important part, so you go up there, you can walk around, make sure you check all the areas for cracking or uh, separation, and some year, sometime, you're going to see something that has to be touched up, and as soon as you do, you get that taken care of, all right? Also, this housing tells us this is pre-wired for a backup camera, so uh, this one takes a Furion camera, and it will fit right in that housing, so if you buy one, we sell them here, but if you buy one, anywhere make sure you get the fury on that fits in that housing right there okay all right so let's go inside okay that's just your grill right there you have some story and like a foot locker here if you can see that underneath the bed okay uh, obviously you have a roof vent if you ever wanted to upgrade you can get a power vent like a max air or a fantastic fan and it'll fit right in there. You can wire it using that power. So you can you can add ventilation, uh, powered ventilation, if you want. The microwave works like any other microwave. Your range top. You're just going to turn it on and light it with a lighter. Okay. Obviously, you have common. This one has everything's key to like, so you don't have to have a bunch of different keys. You just have two. This is considered two sets. There's actually just two keys. So one key should operate everything. Um, I'm skeptical as to whether that it operates your uh, outside shower so I'm going to double check to make sure you don't need another key for that but um, I'm, I'll either way you'll be uh, I'll, I'll have looked at it and solved the problem by then by the time you get here I think, I think we'll have, probably have to give you a 751 key for that okay let's see here that's your furnace right there this is your thermostat it just all the way to the left is off it clicks to the right you hear it go on It'll light automatically, but when you shut it off, you click it to the left like that. As soon as you do, the flame goes out, but it still will cycle for another minute or two to cool it down and to purge itself, okay? Your, uh, this play, your radio plays DVDs and CDs. You can stream off this USB here. Of course, it's got Bluetooth, so you can hook up wirelessly and stream off your phone or your tablet. So it does a lot of uh, things considering your camping. If you want, you can hook your it through your obviously through your TV set. There's a backer plate here somewhere, right there it feels like. Um, and then you have a, this is a signal booster from the digital antenna. You could shut it off, for example, but you want it on. You hook your 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 TV coax right up to here, and there's obviously patch for uh, for sound and video. Um, so you'll be all set. If you get a swing out bracket or a scissor bracket, if you can spend the extra money and get one that locks into place. Therefore, you won't have to um, you won't have to uh, hang straps and everything to keep the TV from flipping around when you're traveling. 
You might just get one that sits there with, with long, uh, the long cables, whatever you want to do. Okay? Alright. Yeah. So down here, this device here is your, is your LP and carbon monoxide gas detector. It's a safety device. It's always on. Um, it should always be green like that. So um, if it goes off, you're going to take everybody outside, shut off the gas at the front and figure out what's going on. Like I said, it'll detect carbon monoxide or LP gas build up. Also, if it beeps very, very slowly, it's telling you that the battery's low. Okay. Um, this device here is your power converter. It converts 110 AC to 12 volt DC. So on this side, you see you've got regular household type circuit breakers, 110 AC, and they're labeled. Then the power is converted to 12 volt DC over here. You got 12 volt fuses, and they're labeled. So if uh, keep in mind, if one of these fuses were to blow, they'll actually light up and you can see it through this perforation so you would know that. Also, this is a battery charger so as long as you're plugged in to shore power it's going to sense how much energy your battery needs up there and it's going to keep it charged up for you. So it does, uh, it does uh, converts from AC to DC plus it'll charge your battery. Um, your refrigerator is a gas absorption refrigerator so because of that it'll run on LP gas or 110 AC so you just turn it on right there. You can see how it went to auto. Auto means electric. The reason they call it auto is because it, it always searches out 110 AC and it, it, when it finds it, it, it connects and, and runs off of that. If, if it can't find it, it'll automatically switch over to LP gas. Right? Now you can run a dedicated to LP gas just by doing that, but keep in mind even if you have it on auto, let's say you're, you're gone for the day, you're, uh, you're out exploring one day, in the middle of the day the campground loses its power. This will automatically switch from 110 AC because it lost the, the AC power, and it will automatically switch over to LP gas so you don't spoil your food. So it will always, um, 110 AC electricity takes parameters, and then LP gas is always the second choice for it when it's on auto. Okay. One other thing to note, this therm thing's called a thermistor. It's, the, it's actually the thing on the end of that cable there that goes up into that, that clip. Um, you slide that up as high as the cord as the wire will stretch. Therefore, uh, it, it'll be as cool as it can be in the refrigerator. The higher you go with it, the cooler it gets inside the fridge. So you want it up all the way. Okay. The uh, thing to note here, obviously, is... Uh, the sink of the shower work like any other sink of the shower. You do have a vent here with a fan. Run the fan when you use the shower to pull the humidity out. The toilet, which is actually nice, it's a ceramic, not the cheap plastic one. Um, the thing to know about the toilet is the black. First of all, the black tank is directly below, so that's the black tank right down there. All right, we've got no water hooked up, so there's no water coming out when I flushed it there. But the thing you have to know is it has to have chemical and a little bit of water in it before you start using it. So when you get to the campground, you hook up your power and your water, you'll come in here, you'll take your chemical, whichever chemical you use, you'll put one dose right into there, and then you'll step on the pedal and stand on it. Water will come swirling out, and you're going to put about a gallon or so of water in the tank. There's no way to tell exactly what that is, you're just going to use common sense, because uh, the bottom line is you have to have some water in the black tank with chemical before you start using it. Okay. If you ever dump the black tank, and you're going to continue to camp, then you'd come in here and repeat the procedure. You'd put some uh, chemical and some water in there. Okay? Simple enough. Okay, so this is your control panel over here. Alrighty, so... Um, your water pump that I told you about is right here. You light your water heater to light it is right here. Always make sure there's gas... Or, excuse me. Uh, uh, before you light that gas, always make sure there's water in the... F or there's water in the hot water tank. See, well, that was a mouthful. Always make sure there's water in the tank before you light it because you don't want to dry fire it. Um, so you always check to make sure that you've uh, filled the tank before you turn any, on any heat, okay? That's important. Um, you've got your awning power here. It's a powered awning, so you're just going to extend it and retract it from here. Keep in mind the awning goes out eight feet. You can see the awning tube once you get all the way out with it. And um, never leave the awning out unattended. If you're not going to be at the campsite, roll it in so it does not get damaged by the wind or weather. Okay. Um, these are just light switches here. And 
these are um, this is how you check your levels. The battery is charged, although you always want to check when you're not plugged in. Fresh water has about a third in there because we're still water testing it. But you can see how it graduates up in one third increments. Black is empty. As it fills, it would graduate up in one third increments. Your gray is empty also. All right. Once you get past two thirds with your black and gray tanks, you're going to have to start thinking about dumping it, of course. Also, every plug in the tra trailer is wired through this GFCI right here even the one on the outside. So if you're using a coffee pot or something outside and it pops, you're still going to set it right, reset it right here, all right? Okay. Okay, and then of course the, the controls are on your air conditioner for that. And you, all your lights have a button in the middle also so to turn them on and off. They're all LEDs. Okay. The table, you can pull the pole out and lay the table on those cleats and put the cushions in there to fill in the gap and you have another bed there. So you've got a lot of room. Um, so I want to thank you for purchasing your trailer here at National RV Detroit and remember what I told you about uh, inspecting your roof and seals three times a season that's very important if you own a trailer it's something you have to do um, also keep in mind that you have to winterize this trailer uh, in the fall because it does have a plumbing system so you have to pump antifreeze into the system you'll have to educate yourself about that or else um, uh, have somebody do it for you okay um, and the last thing that I wanted to remind you about, always make sure there's water in the hot water tank before you turn it on. Okay? Thank you very much.